Gamers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got us a 2002 old and tired Chevrolet 1500. It's got the big 5.3 in it. Money lights on. Customer told me that he has an EVAT problem. He went and uh, you know got the code red there at the zone or someplace like that. Wants us to figure out what's up. See if we can't get them fixed up. She's a little rough, but we'll do our best. So we let it read the VIN. Uh, let's see. With or without throttle actuator control. This one has a cable on it still. So we're going to say without throttle actuator. We'll pop in here. I see I had ABS light and stuff on. Not uncommon on this vintage. Most people have the ABS problems with these trucks and they simply pull the fuse. He just wants the engine light out so he can take it somewhere to get a sticker put on it. So we'll do that. So yeah, we got four codes. All right, so there. Well, hopefully you guys can see. I'm trying. I'm going to use this tool instead of our Tech Two because it seems to be easier for you guys to read the screen. Uh, so we have we got a PO440, and that's going to be that's going to be commanding the mill on, as it states. So that's just a general EVAP system fault. And we have a 442, which is a small leak, which is also a mill request. Uh, 449. Not a mill request, history code for the vent solenoid control circuit. And then a 453, which is past, past, and past. So a history code for fuel tank pressure sensor. All right. So we'll take, we'll pop back out of here. We'll see what we can do right from the driver's seat. Uh, best thing we can do, first of all, we'll pop in and see, you know, do we hear the canister vent valve close? Super common on these. And that'll cause a lot of issues, a lot of the codes anyways. So we'll just listen. I don't hear it clicking underneath. Okay. So not, you can't always hear them, but typically, you know, typically you can in the shop here. It's kind of quiet. Uh, we can hear them, you know, open and close. Uh, so what else can we gather here? Uh, fuel tank pressure sensor atmospheric on GMs is usually around 1.5 volts. So that looks good. Of course, I've seen them stuck at that voltage too. So what we can do, there's really no other data pits we want to look at. What we'll do is we'll go into a purge and seal test. Right here, we'll fire this pick up. It's going to be kind of loud. I don't think it has any exhaust on it. And, and my intention is... We're going to ramp up the purge solenoid. We're going to try to pull a vacuum on this tank. Now, typically, it closes the vent solenoid, you know, pulls a vacuum, and then we shut off the purge, and we see how fast it decays. I don't believe the vent solenoid is working in this case, but hopefully we can open the purge high enough to see if the fuel tank pressure sensor responds. Oh, yeah. Chevy Thunder, baby. All right, so let's see here. Uh, we're going to be looking at fuel tank pressure. That's millimeters of mercury. I guess that's all we get. We well, we can scroll down. So we're going to take and bump it up. So we're at ten percent. Just keep going here. Usually, you get the vacuum high enough, despite the fact that the canister vent is likely stuck open usually we can start to pull the vacuum and you, and you can see that we are hopefully you can see that we are so we'll crank it right, right open here so we'll seal it off so it's and you can see our pressure just decays rapidly so right now the canister vent valve should be closed because it states that it is says it's not venting this back up here but I think that's what we're going to be going after yeah because clearly our pressure sensor is working you know that's we're purging it at about 80 percent so the purge purge valve is almost all the way open so we could verify that's working in a couple ways we could go look at fuel trims or we could just look at our fuel tank pressure sensor which we can see works now if this thing was not if the canister vent really was closed we'd be collapsing the tank at this point or you know we'd get kicked out of the test more than likely 
So here is where I'm attempting to seal it. The perch solenoid goes closed, but you can see the vacuum decay is huge. So indicates that we have a massive leak, you know, gas caps missing, giant hole in something, or, you know, the vent solenoid isn't working. So let's go underneath and test it. As I mentioned in a previous tool time video when we had the Power Probe 4, that we were going to try to utilize this in our diagnostics. This is the perfect example because we're going to be under there on a power supplied, you know, full time power supplied vent solenoid and a computer controlled ground. So the driver test in this tool would be what we would utilize for that, hopefully. And then we could also use this, you know, to command the canister vent open and close. So we're going to give it the old college try and see if this is helpful. under the truck the canister vent valve is a son of a monkey on these things so that is the crack right between this is the cab or what's left of the cab which is a little rough in the box and the vent valve lives right on this front box mount and there's a bracket there and then the hose that goes to it and then the electrical connector now you know short of pulling the box it's a pain to get to that connector to do any testing so I had to take the vent valve out of the way which I would have shown you guys, but unfortunately the camera, I just can't function with it right in my way. So I, I released it, I unhooked it, I got it out of the way, I've got it unplugged. Prior to doing that, I did use the scan tool and verify that, you know, I could not hear it clicking. So, you know, and clearly I could have, you know, given where I was and turning on and off. So that leads us one of two things. Either we have, you know, a power supply switch problem to this, you know, power supply or a control problem to this vent valve because it doesn't appear to be physically busted which sometimes they do they get moisture in them here and then they crack and then you'll see them split right up the plastic now this one does not appear to be and it is open you can blow through it uh, which we we already knew that uh, so what we can do now is check it and see if it clicks which don't be surprised if you're doing yours and it does because sometimes all these things need is a good little whack and away they go uh, the other thing we can do if it does click at that point we should be able to get to that connector now. I should be able to drag it out far enough to get to it. We'll make sure that it works, has good power, good control, and then we're gonna have to make a call. So we do have our power probe right here. What we can do first is we can check, you know, probably make sure we didn't blow the fuse in our power probe. Good handy little tip. Make sure last time you're fiddling with it, especially if you share it, that the fuse in here is good. Just touch to the tip. If the fuse is open, it wouldn't beep at you. We're in the Volt DC test. I'm going to hook this up, touch the other pin in there. And remember, in this test mode, if there is a path to ground that has less than 10 ohms of resistance, it will sound the alarm. So this is good in the sense that we have more than 10 ohms resistance, so it's not a dead short. So when we hit our magic button here, it shouldn't blow our breaker. I'm gonna turn the alarm off so we can hear if it's clicking. And I don't hear it clicking, which we clearly should. I do see some sparks coming off the end of the tip, though, when I touch it on the solenoid, just very faintly. All right, and it does drop some voltage there. That's our tip voltage, about 12 volts. So now we're going to go into our feed test. We can just check the resistance of this coil. Oops. Yeah, about 14, about 14 ohms. So we're going to be just a smidge over an amp, which that would be about right. So perhaps the coil is good, but physically it is stuck. So that we know. Let's just try. Sometimes that will bring them back to life, believe it or not. Back up to our Volts DC test. No, nope, still no clicking. Okay, safe to assume this is junk. Let's make sure that the vehicle side is good. I got the scan tool down here. I'm in the canister, well, where are you guys? Canister vent mode right now. It should be turned off, it is venting. So I'm gonna just come up here with the power probe in the Volt DC mode. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's going to be a, a hoo-ha, we'll call it, to plug back in. There is like zero extra wire on this. I'm going to get the hose out of the way. Well, it is what it is. That's as far as I can get it. You guys can't see, can you? I've got you probably in. Well, let me just try to do this test here. Okay, so one side. We do have battery voltage. We have 11.95 volts. It should beep here because it's within a half of all the battery voltage. Come on. All right, so that is the battery voltage side. That is a pink wire. Now the white wire is gonna be the control side. So I wanna to go to driver test. This is gonna put 12 volts at the tip. We're gonna plug it into the driver side or into the white wire, into the control side of the ECM. Now the ECM is going to recognize the uh, vet solenoid is being plugged in. You know what, i got to get a jumper lead here so I can do this. That's better for you. So I am plugged into the control side, just with the front probe, just have it laying there, down through the lead and into the power probe. It is not venting right now. Now when we turn it to venting, it should drop that voltage all the way down, or to not venting really. And there we go. See that driver works, holds it almost all the way to ground. I'll turn it back off and it goes back open circuit. Turn it back on. Okay, so technically that should be all the testing we have to do as long as we're not getting burned. Now, if I remember correctly from reading the book, I think that was a 50 milliamp load. I'd have to double check. Find out. I'll double check, yeah, I'll double check that in a second. But technically, knowing how the tool works, making a diagnosis, looking at our data, this is something we have to, excuse me, have to repair. It clearly doesn't work. It did not harm the driver in the ECM. You know, it's not shorted. The fuse isn't blown. Based on what the information that we gathered, it needs a new canister vent valve. I'm gonna take an order one. Fingers crossed I can get the sucker back up in there and get it plugged in. Now GM didn't use this design for very long. I forgot all about this. You know, the later ones are, you know, they had them by the tank, front of the tank, and under the hood. They had them everywhere. So doesn't matter where they put them. They never work. Or they always seem to fail quite regularly. Except on the early body cells where these were under the hood. You never changed them. Most people didn't even know they were under the hood. That's where it always worked the best. Uh, in either case, I'm going to get one ordered. We're going to put it in. See how it works. And keep on trucking. Do perfect timing. New one's here from Napper. There's the part number for what it's worth. And there it is. Meanwhile, we were waiting for the part. We were able to fix the AC on a lady's Nissan and get a video on that too. So worked out good. Let's see. If this one click it. Let's see. I'll just go for poop. Oh, okay. We're on. Oh, we're on driver test. We want to be on something else. Feed test. We'll see what the resistance of this coil is. About 20. 1.2 ohms on this one known good so it's going to be what about 0.6 amps i'm going to volt the dc test turn the squawker off we should hear this one click okay she clicks i'm happy i'm going to get this thing stuffed up in there difficult to record like i say because the camera has to be right where my digits have to be and there's our new one. Well, the best you can see it anyways. Back in place. These things are a pisser to get to. Uh, and I wasn't going to mess around with the bracket. You know, make a mountain out of a molehill. But it's in. It's plugged in. Now, theoretically, find the power button here. We should be able to get the old Alto. I did turn the key on before I raised it back up. We should be able to hear it click at this point. We can get you guys up there so you can hear it. We've got to turn it on. All right, so it clicks. Now, we we'll have to ask the question, does it work? Oh, baby. To answer that age-old question, we are going to do a purging seal. Now, this is kind of a quick and dirty test. 
but we'll make sure that it can hold and hold the vacuum. Of course, it is going to have a certain amount of decay, so we're going to take the bump up our canister vent, or our purge rather. Now we should start pulling a vacuum on the tank because it is not venting. So it should start drawing down a vacuum. We can see that it is. See, it gets to a certain threshold, it's gonna kick us out, so we're gonna stop it here shortly. It is pulling a vacuum. Now we're gonna seal off the system. The purge is at zero, and we should have a certain amount of decay, which you can see we have a pretty rapid decay right there. Okay. That's big, that went down way too fast. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna bump it up, we're gonna build the vacuum in the tank. So this is why we always double check because clearly we have more than one problem. Draw a vacuum on it. We're gonna seal it. And then we're gonna watch our tank decay and we can see we go back to atmospheric pressure pretty dang quick so besides having a bad vent solenoid we also have what appears to be a large leak so I've got a good idea and if you want to see that good idea check out the next video I'm not going to show you in this one have a perfect opportunity at this point to use a new tool I've got the new red line what do they call it the Redline Ready Smoke. It's Redline's newest smoke machine. At this point, we have fixed what we knew was wrong. The canister vent valve was bad. Uh, you guys saw it in this video. However, trying to verify or repair, we also notice that we have a gross leak or what appears to be a gross leak. If we get this back to the customer, he's gonna drive it, money light's gonna come on, and you're, you're gonna get one of those. That's why we always verify our work. So check out the next video. We're going to use the Ready Smoke. Find out where this leak's coming from. Get this truck fixed and ship it. You always interrupt my videos, woman. Life. What's up? You gotta go to the bank and the post <laughs> You see his key? <laughs> uh, I better not show that to the people. It's pretty inappropriate. Funny. I don't no, understand. It's not. That is kind of funny. It's not funny. It kind of is. You'll take it. It's nasty. It is. Man, well, this guy some kind of redneck. What's he got in here? Bullet. Bullet. Pow, pow, pow. Bullet, bullet gun. <laughs> got a whole tray full of them here. Must be doing some shooting out his window. Hmm. Them dare trespassers. All right. I got to finish this video. Right. Okay. Good luck. Leave the children. Great. After you get done checking out that video, check us out on our socials. Go down there. Click subscribe. Ring the bell. Find us around, patron, all that kind of good stuff. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.